art, the most expressive form of communication. It's what helps us connect to the world, to the past, and to ourselves without the need of words. It's been around before language and grammar. It has evolved from drawings in a cave to the diverse world of art with sculptures, photographs, paintings, and so much more. We live in a world where not just anything can be art, but where art can be made from just about anything. Art has no limits and is not subjected to only a specific group of people. Anyone and everyone can find themselves getting lost into a piece of work. Two fascinating artworks that I came across were from the 1900s. One being the sculpture known as The Standing Woman by Alberto Giacometti in 1960, and the other being a photograph titled Larm Tears by Man Ray in 1934. They are both different forms of art, yet spark the same form of interest in me. Emanuel Rudninsky, also known as Man Ray, did a series of art. He did films, paintings, sculptures, and other media, but he was primarily known for his photography, which is ironic because it upset him being recognized only for his photography in America. Many of his best photographs were done between the 1920s and the 1940s. They were described to fit perfectly with the new culture of art, which was surrealism. Although his early influence and work was due to the era of Dadaism, he shifted his work after arriving to Paris from New York. In this specific photograph of La Homme Tears, you can see how amazing the quality of the cameras were at the time. Although it is blurred in certain sections of the woman's face, you can still focus and see that he captured the emotion perfectly well with his choosing of the angle. The colors in the picture are monochromatic, which details the culture of the cinematic and media world in the 1930s. It also lets you see Man Ray's passion of the cinematic world as the photograph looks much like something you would see in the film or motion pictures of those times. There is a lot of light coming from the top left corner of the photograph, which is where the woman is looking up to while obviously in distress. However, when I first laid eyes on this photo, it sort of made me think of hope. Because although the woman is in distress, she is looking upwards from where a light source is coming from. The glass tears are huge and perfect spheres, yet seem to be staying in place. It does not look like she had tears running down her face. They seem to represent the burden she must be enduring and carrying. She seems to look so desperate, looking for a way out or calling for help with just her eyes. I feel that Man Ray used this woman's face as a way of communicating his feelings at the time when his lover broke things off with him. He was heartbroken and in distress himself. And although anger motivated his vengeance to break her through his art, his hurt was captured most in this photograph. Alberto Giacometti was also around the same era as Man Ray. However, he was known for his slim, tall sculptures in the wake of World War II. He has created several figurines with the same concept, but his earlier work consisted of smaller figurines. They all, however, integrated the very same mood and look into the world of how people felt during that era. World War II was a huge and horrible experience that left people beat in life. This sculpture consisted of an unpleasant dark color. It carries no vibrance, no happiness to be felt when looking at the sculpture. It also does not consist of smooth details of the human's actual anatomy like many human sculptures made in the past. The surface of this figurine is very rough and rigid looking. It reminds me of the documented photographs of people who've died from the effect of a volcano eruption. The body looks almost burnt, starved, and fragile. I felt that the color he used along with the texture and thinness of the sculpture he chose to do was culturally inspired. I say this because the sculpture was created during a time everyone around the world was negatively impacted. Many male relatives and husbands were lost. Many Jewish people faced a horrendous experience and lost their homes, their families, heirlooms, and self-purpose and identity. It was a whole new culture and people lived differently than they were before the war started. 
It was a depressing time when people were working on recovering. I think the sculpture captured that time so perfectly because so much sadness and solitude is felt through this work of art. I seem to be drawn into works that capture my more sensitive and sad feelings. Both of these pieces seem to feed into my emotional state, therefore I felt very related to these pieces. I feel I am in a very dark place. I find it no coincidence that both the pieces I chose seem to relate in color. Although there is some white in the photograph, it still consists of black and gray, much like the sculpture.